Hey guys, in this tutorial I will show you how to deploy a Taipei app on Heroku. In our last video we created a sales dashboard with different filter options and a toggle button to switch between the dark and light mode. Currently this app is only running on my local machine. To make it accessible to everyone we need to deploy it somewhere. For this tutorial I will be using Heroku which makes the deployment process very straightforward. However, please note that Heroku no longer offers a free plan. As of this recording, the cheapest plan starts at 5 euro per month. Ok, with that said, let's deploy this web application to Heroku. There is actually a well written guide from Heroku that explains each step. I will link this article in the description box below. In a nutshell we will need 4 things. The Heroku CLI, Git, a proc file and a requirements.txt file. And yeah, I know, that sounds a bit funky, but don't worry. I will explain each of those 4 things as we go along and include all the necessary links and commands in the description box as well. Whoopsie, after editing the video I actually forgot to mention one important thing and that is you of course also need an Heroku account and you also need to input your credit card details. Otherwise it won't work. Ok, and with that said, back to the video. Let's start with the Heroku CLI. CLI stands for Command Line Interface and in simple terms we need it so that your computer can communicate with Heroku. To install it, download the respective installer. In my case, I will download the 64-bit version. You can simply stick to all the default settings. I have it already installed, so that is why I clicked on cancel here. Alright, next up we also need Git. Git is a version control system that keeps track of all the changes you have made in your project. If you have never worked with Git before, then don't worry. We will just need a couple of commands, which I will show you. But first, you also need to install Git. So, download the installer for your operating system. Once downloaded, fire up the installer. And also here, just stick to the default settings and install it. With that in place, let me navigate back to my project folder and stop my current app. Ok, now we only need two more files. The first one is a so called requirements file. Later, when we deploy the app, we need to tell Heroku which packages it should install. And we do this with the requirements.txt file. So here you want to list down all the packages that Heroku needs to install in order to run your app. In my app I actually just need TaiPai. If you want you can also pin the version like so. Now I also need Pandas. However, Pandas is also a dependency of TaiPai. That is why I only need to specify TaiPai here. Alright, now that Heroku knows which packages it needs to install, we also need to tell it how to start our application. And we can do that with a proc file. Be careful here, the proc file has no file extension, but you can still open it in a text editor like notepad. In this file you want to paste the following command, which you can also find in the description box below. Here we tell Heroku that it's a web app and to start it, it needs to run python followed by the name of the file. In my case I call it main.py. If you have a different file name, you will need to adjust it here. Ok, with that in place we are ready for the deployment. The first step is to open the terminal in your project folder. Ensure you are in the correct directory. In my case my files are located on my desktop in a folder called sales dashboard. Next let me arrange my windows for you so that all the things we need are on the screen. Ok, great. So as I mentioned already, there's already an article from Heroku which explains everything in more depth. To get started we need to initialize a git repository. Basically we just need to tell git to keep track of all my files in my current folder. And we can do that with the command git init. Once executed you will find a hidden folder in your project directory. By default you might not see hidden folders on windows. To enable that you can navigate to the options and under view you can select show hidden files, folders and drives if you want. Ok, next up we need to include all our files in the next commit. To do that simply type git add and a period. And then after that you can commit it. The dash m stands for message. Here you can type any message you like. Typically you want to describe what kind of changes you have done to your files. In my case it's an initial commit, so I will just name the message accordingly. Now, currently our git repository only lives on our local machine. To deploy it to Heroku we will first need to log in. And for that you have installed the Heroku CLI. So that is why you can now type heroku login in your command prompt. You should be prompted to log in via your browser. Once done you can close the browser tab again. 
After we are logged in, we can create a new app by running Heroku Create dash A followed by the name of your app. This name will also be visible later in your URL. I will call my app My Sales Dashboard. Alright, once the app is created, we can deploy it by pushing our code using Git. So you want to type git push heroku main. Now in my case, I'm actually getting an error and it says there is no main branch. We can also quickly check that by running git show ref. And here you can see that my main branch is actually called master. So that means I need to type git push heroku master. This time we didn't get an error. Instead, Heroku is now installing all the packages listing in the requirements file and then starts our app with the command from the proc file. Now, this might take a couple of minutes, but once done, your app should be live and available under the following link. Okay, and here it is. My app is now live on the internet. Lastly, let me show you what to do if you want to make changes to your app. For that, let's change the title and add an additional bar emoji to the end here. Once I'm done with my changes, I just need to follow the steps again. First, add all the files to the next commit. Then commit my changes with a message. In my case, I will write change a title. And then, last but not least, you need to push your updated code to Heroku. This time the deployment should be faster, as Heroku is smart enough to recognize that you didn't make any changes to your requirements file. Alright, and if you go back and refresh your website, we will see the updated title. Lastly, let me point out that you also have a couple of more options for your app if you log into your Heroku account. For example, under Configure Dinos and then Change Dino Type, you can specify how much you want to spend per month. As I said in the beginning, the cheapest option would be 5 euro per month. Additionally, under the Settings tab, you could also change the domain name. Currently, the domain is as follows. But you can also buy your own domain like dashboardking.com and then point your sign to that URL. If you're interested in that, then check out my next video where I will guide you through the process. Until then, happy deployment and thanks for watching.